I'm gonna do something without sleight of hand. I'm gonna do something with sleight of mouth. This is Jonathan Shu. He's a magician in New York City. One card. He recently came by Dig HQ to bring us a little magic and to show us just how easily our own brains fool us. Keep it as a souvenir. So magicians like to fool audiences by exposing the gaps of logic in their brains. There's three methods that I like, which are attention control, misdirection, and simulation. The classic vanishing coin trick is a perfect demonstration of these three methods. Attention control is when the magician directs your focus to a specific object. This reinforces what you're seeing and feeling is actually real, and your brain goes on to make assumptions about what to expect from the rest of the trick. Here's another method of fooling you, simulation. Let's see that again. John uses pantomime and acting to make us think he's actually passing the coin from one hand to the other. He's simulating this hand is holding the coin, while simulating this hand is empty. Combined with another instance of attention control, where John is looking at his own empty hand, our brain believes the simulation was real. Okay, so at this point, our brain is figuring that there's some sleight of hand going on, and it's thinking about how to keep track of that coin. Oof, tricked again. But we've seen this before. Simulating the top hand picking up the coin, but the coin actually stays in the bottom hand, and using attention control to look at the empty hand. Disappears, it doesn't disappear, it just travels into my, into my pocket. Now here's the third method, misdirection. By calling our attention to his pocket, our brain is trying to make sense of this new variable. How did the coin get into the pocket? Flushes, give it a gentle blow. Ooh, nice, but that doesn't. Coin right no. We're surprised because all this time we assumed there was only one coin. But that was our own brain making assumptions based on what we saw and felt earlier. In the words of a typically silent magician, magic is about understanding and then manipulating how viewers digest sensory information. Clearly, we've been manipulated. We saw one coin, we touched one coin, John held our attention to his hand holding that one coin, we assumed there must only be one coin involved. When John misdirects our focus to his pocket, we'd never think he's actually picking up coin number two. So the last thing we're expecting to see now is another coin. I'm just gonna put one coin right here inside your hand. Okay. This one goes inside this hand. Okay. Watch, it doesn't disappear, it travels. <laughs> the core of every trick is a cold cognitive experiment in perception. Just because I've revealed how a magic trick is done doesn't necessarily mean you'll be able to figure out every single trick because there are thousands of ways to do one single trick. A magician's data sample spans centuries and his experiments have been replicated often enough to constitute near certainty. Magic is actually just a passageway for someone to, to show their personality and to really take a trick and make it their own. <laughs> for the magician, magic is a form of self-expression. For the audience, it reveals the brain's assumptions. <laughs> wow. To be able to see magic happen in front of you, even if you know how it's done, if it's done well, it really doesn't matter if you know the secret. You're still going to be amazed at either the technique or by the trick itself. Two. Three is, no wait. Ah, what the audience want, and I think what the magician wants too, they both want connection. Our main job is to just transport you back to that childlike state of wonder. To feel like a kid again. Was your card? This six of hearts was your card. In the end, there may be nothing magical about magic, but it frees our minds from a world of logic, at least for a moment.